Excellent. So thank you again for that warm introduction, Steffi, and also thank you uh, for the good ending of the panel we just heard, because I thought there's lots ahead of us. Of course, uh, listening to the speakers just now, um, we're probably going into turbulent times, or we'll be staying into turbulent times for a while. Um, at the same time, we're here at DLD, and it says beyond now. So beyond the turbulent times now. And maybe to find some courage at the beginning of the year, but then also to look beyond now, it's maybe worthwhile also looking at how far we've come as humans in terms of human development. And uh, my colleagues at the McKinsey Global Institute and I, we spent quite a bit of time in the past two years looking at human progress. How do you measure it? And actually, how can you then advance it going forward? What can you do with it? And here at DLD, um, I want to show you what we found so far. It's a microscope, we call it, of human development. Pixels of progress. It's not the pixels you would expect at DLD, so it's not the digital pixels, but it is a much more granular view on the world and on the human progress as we start to measure it. And maybe I bring it to life by starting uh, with a tale of two cities. Cities in Portugal and in India. So when you ask yourself how developed is Portugal today, one of the fastest growing economies in Europe, OECD country. So this is a, a success case, like Portugal is a proper country in terms of human development. You'd be saying, wow, this is great. You look at India and say, India certainly has grown a lot, but it is far away in terms of GDP per capita when you look at where it currently stands and the economy stands. However, we talked about countries a lot before and we heard about regions. We think it is actually very important to, to understand better because the averages within borders are often very flawed when you try to learn something about a place. So if we double click and look at this, Porto on one hand, Portugal's second biggest city, certainly a center of economic activity, has actually a GDP per capita of 33,000. So this is actually below the average of the Portuguese economy, mind you. At the same time, Mapusa, a city in the state of Goa in India, has the exact same GDP per capita. So where the macro view at uh, like country level might be quite misleading. We do think it's very important to understand a little better like where the granularity of this growth lies and what drives it. So, when Galileo uh, invented the microscope, he enabled humanity to see factor 230x of what the human eye can see, 230 times. So, we wondered what would it do to our understanding of the world and human progress if we could get to that microscopic granularity Galileo did uh, in, in his times when we apply it actually to human progress and our view to the, on the world. Right now, we looked at this, about 180 countries measured, gives you on average 40 million people, but it includes Monaco and it includes China. So that's the average you get. Like it's about the big sizes and also like big like GDPs on average, just like not very telling, very comparable. Bringing this down now to micro regions, and we constructed 40,000 of them, actually gives you a much more granular microscopic view. So 40,000 cells of human development activity, GDP, health, well-being. I get to that in a second much smaller, less than 200,000 people per cell, much more granular in terms of like surface area you might need to cover, often cities and high density, but then also in terms of GDP within those cells and the evolution of that GDP. So how does it look like when you span up a microscope like this? So that's the world, two axes. One you see in the x-axis is the GDP per capita as you would measure it. And then we mapped life expectancy in terms of years at birth. That's the world, simple, one global average. That's the subcontinent. So you get a bit of a more granular view, different distribution. You break it up in countries. So the big bubbles, as you can see, is by population size. What stays the same is China and India, more or less, but you get a much more granular view already, not very surprising. Now we do this. 
This is the pixeled view of the world in the 40,000 microregions. And what, show, what it gives you is actually a much more differentiated picture of the world and human progress as you map it up there. So Maputo and Porto are both in the exact same square, while they would have not been in at all if you had looked at it at a regional or at a country level of just that. So I'll show you what is possible with a higher resolution view like this on the world. Well, it's all conceptually probably very, like, hopefully a little interesting, but this like it becomes more interesting when you look at it, the application actually on human development. So what do we see? The pixels allow you to see a very nuanced view of countries right next to each other, and we call it the phenomenon of the blurring or even disappearing border when you look at human development. Very interesting also in the EU context, as we've just seen. Europe as a region versus the countries, how do you influence all of that? So if you compare Peru and Bolivia, and there's like surprisingly great data actually about both countries, you would see that one has about 50% higher GDP per capita than the other. That is actually quite significant in terms of development. Um, however, the country view on aggregate explains about 20% of the growth and the growth story and evolution, if you look at it within borders. When you take away the borders and you pixel just the regions at a micro level, you see the border almost disappearing, right? It almost becomes irrelevant. So it's about coastal, suddenly, what it says. There's like as developed and undeveloped and unprogressing regions in both of the countries. And it does make you wonder, like, what do these regions do differently? Or like, what kind of interventions do you actually need to make them all progress? 80% of the story is in the details, not within the country. Another good example, um, the country view, for instance, would tell us in terms of economic progress. So we looked at countries and wondered how did the GDP per capita increase in the last 20 years in those countries? So which grew the most? So like human development at the very core, right? So the US um, at 12,400 uh, per capita average increase safely above the threshold of 7,000, which we put, which is the top 30% in the world. That's the United States. India on the right-hand side, far below the threshold, 4,000, like almost half of what you would have needed actually to make it to the top 30%. However, let's take a more pixeled and granular view on this. In US, 1,400 micro-regions, which are home to 120 million people that actually not grow to qualify in the top third of the world economy. So the United States, who you'd like arguably say is like a leader for the last 20 years in economic growth and still uh, wealth and development, 30% of the region, home to 120 million people, did actually not qualify in the top third of economic growth and development under that measure. At the same time, when you look at India, India by far wouldn't have qualified, um, but in India's micro-regions, almost the equivalent number, so 114 million to 120 million people actually did qualify in that, uh, in that comparison. So taking a closer look at India is actually very interesting because we falsely would include 120 million Americans in terms of progress and development by those measures. However, we would falsely exclude about the same number of Indians. That's why it's really worthwhile to take a global view. When you look at the world in total, we think about 1.6 billion 1.3 billion, 4 billion people are actually misclassified in terms of their development stages and economic progress. So we do think a much more granular look is actually quite worthwhile to understand where we're at, where we've come from, and then actually also where we're going to go next. Um, I'll skip this a bit in the interest of time to go um, to the journey and the findings on human development for the last 20 years and what we've seen and what might be an uplifting message actually on the path forward. So we looked at, as I said, human progress and we measure human progress in both lives, so more years in life, people on the planet, and we measure it in livelihoods, so ability to live well in a prosperous way. And we plotted that, as you see, real GDP per capita, again, real is important, GDP per capita, and we plotted in life expectancy. And that was our baseline in 2020. We looked at this and said, well, about 30% of the regions 
top right hand corner and these two colors now are important for the rest of, of what I'm going to share. The blue regions, these are the most prosperous regions, like the regions where people live the longest and have the most resources actually to live well and develop. Blue regions. Then we have the orange regions, that's the bottom third, top third, bottom third. Um, people live about seven years shorter on average in those regions and have a, a third or almost a fourth actually only of GDP per capita, so very like different baseline. We looked at this in 2000, split was about even. And this is a story of human progress. So about 20% on each side, 21 to 19, were living in the top and the bottom uh, third of this. We are doing a fast forward 2010. You already see the picture is moving. So the pixels of progress, they're moving up to the right-hand corner. And also the pixels on the, on the left-hand corner are decreasing. So we're at 34 to 7. And what's important is the darkness of the pixel is actually the density of the population in that pixel. So even with population growth from going about to like six, six and a half billion to eight billion now, with growing population yet, we're actually moving to the right hand corner. So these pixels migrate, it's not people migrating, it's growing population being wealthier and living longer. So now 2019, a generation you could argue later from the baseline, there is progress. So 46% of the world's population right now live in the top right hand corner, 46%. Top 30% versus the baseline in 2020 versus only 5% still in the orange region. So there is quite some, uh, quite some movement in this. When you look at it in the worldview, going from conceptual to real and again to the borders and the countries, 1.3 billion people living in micro regions that were blue in 2000, 20% too, look at the change in colors to almost 50%, so 46% of that actually now on the globe has developed. Um, interesting, of course, is once China and the role it plays, we just heard it on the panel as well. Everybody would like, agree with that, pretty obvious. However, China is only 50% of that story. So there is another China <laughs> that is just not China, but in 75 different countries. And that's why this is so important. So it's not like the, the, the bricks and some clusters and at a country level, but actually going back and saying, so the other China we find in this is actually in 75 countries that has done an equivalent amount of growth and development in that same period. So very important to actually understand that, 50% of global population. Same as on the bottom, I've just explained. So going from 20% in 2000, you see Latin America, quite a bit in, in Asia, of course, and then Africa to 2019. The black regions are the ones who emerged from orange since 2000. So this is progress. They're out of the bottom third. Um, of course, there's, there's still lots to be done, um, but this is really, we think, a picture of, of progress with, with data behind it. Uh, well, it's quite not, noteworthy. So as I said, life and livelihoods is what we measure as human progress, our definition of that. Um, that's driven by innovation largely. And again, at DLD, uh, this is all about innovation, understanding that better. Um, you wouldn't be surprised that there's a strong correlation right, between the GDP per capita and also uh, the life expectancy at birth. Right? When you look at this, not that surprising. What's interesting is, again, that the points of the same color don't sit at the same place. So there's a bit of a dispersion, but it's like what you would expect, 2000. Now look what the dots do and also what the curve does. See that? So everything moves up, we all develop, but the most interesting insight in here is actually that the curve bends. It tells it takes a different angle. And that's the interplay of like, the economic development and just the GDP growth, but also of innovation. And I explain to you why. So we get more health, we get more years out of every incremental dollar as we go through innovation. So when you look at this, the delta we've seen, and so you can compare, we have two curves on this. So the 2000 curve, the first one I showed you, and the 2019 curve. So while we have moved almost 10 years, 9.3 years up in development, life expectancy, we've added close to $6,000 per capita GDP. If you had just done the income effect, if it had just moved actually along the correlated line, you would have probably gotten halfway in terms of life expectancy. But then the curve, like the tilt of the curve, as you do it through innovation, is adding actually that other benefit 
to the development curve. So it's a really interesting combination um, of the two where we say it's, of course, it's prosperity and growth, but it's also innovation that ultimately drives human progress. So that's just the beginning. We're on a journey to refine that microscope. We'll add, of course, more data points. How is this actually relevant to then the CEOs will make those decisions. It's like it's not a country level decision. It's a regional. It's like how do you cooperate on a global scale? But maybe like nation states behave differently. So we think it's quite an, an interesting journey we're on. We invite partners to join us on this journey. It's really a collaborative uh, effort to build that microscope of human development and make it more relevant as we go along. What is there to be learned? Uh, a granular lens changes everything. Think about Maputo and Porto, or India and the United States. Secondly, there is progress, significant one. We're halfway on our journey to blue, if you stay with me in that picture. Third, there are pockets of opportunity everywhere, while well, you might not have thought, but you do need to take a more granular look. Simplistic country averages, very misleading, as I started out. And last but not least, markets move, right? There's so much like development at that granular level that it's supremely important to actually understand not only the differences, but the commonalities of these markets. And these are typically not defined by borders. Thank you very much.